Let's take a quick look at the knapsack problem and why it's called pseudo-polynomial. The knapsack problem has a time complexity of big O and W, where N is the number of items and W is the max capacity of the knapsack. The important thing to understand here uh, to see why the knapsack problem isn't polynomial, it's actually exponential, is the actual definition of time complexity. Time complexity is a measure of the time that it takes for an algorithm to run as a function of the length of its input in bits, not simply as a function of the value of its input. So, let's take a look at a very simple example. Let's say that we have an algorithm that takes in an input of n, where n is just an integer. And then we run a for loop that says, for 1 to n, you know, do something, print n. Well, if we use, if we call this algorithm, and we give it an input value of 4. Well, if n equals 4, then the binary representation of it is going to be 1, 0, 0. So the length of our input in bits is 3. Yet, when we run our for loop for 1 to n, our for loop is going to run 4 times. Now, let's say that we gave our algorithm a different input. This time, we give it a value of 8. Well, 8 in binary is 1, 0, 0, 0. So now, the length of our input in bits is 4. So we've only increased the length of our input by 1, from 3 to 4, and yet the length of time that our algorithm takes to run has doubled, and this will continue to happen. If n equals 16, then of course it's going to be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, and now the length of our input in bits is 5. Once again, we've increased the length of our input by just 1, but the time that our, our algorithm takes to execute has doubled. So, the algorithm that takes in an integer n and then runs a for loop from 1 to n has a time complexity of, you know, big O n, right? It looks linear, but it isn't. Really, a better way to look at it is that its time complexity is big O of 2 to the number of bits that it takes to represent n. So this simple algorithm is exponential. Now, if instead our algorithm didn't take in an integer n, if it took in an array n, right? So now we have some, like, our input, va our input value is an array of, you know, a list of items. And this list is of size n. Well, now, if we say, you know, for 1 to n, print, uh, you know, a times i, or, or whatever this value is, or, or just print n, uh, well, if we give it an input value again here of, say, you know, if a equals one, two, three, four, then the length of our input value in bits, and actually, let's do this another way uh, just to simplify it. Let's say that uh, this is um, an array of Boolean values. So our input, let's say, is uh, zero, one, zero, one. And each, each of these values just takes a single bit to represent. Then the length of A is, 4, and the number of bits that it takes to represent A is 4. 
And if, on the other hand, a were to be an array of length 8, then it, the time that our algorithm takes to complete this is going to increase linearly. If there are eight items, it's going to run eight times. So you can see here uh, what the difference is. On the right side, our input value is just an integer. So when that integer is represented in binary, it's going to be encoded in you know a much smaller number of bits than what the integer value actually is. If it's eight, it's only four bits. If it's 16, it's only five bits. However, if we have an array, if our array is of size 4 uh, and each item only takes one bit to represent, then uh, we're going to have a, a length, a size of 4. If it's 8, we're going to have a uh, size of 8. It increases linearly. So that's what's happening with the knapsack problem. We're saying big O of NW. Well, N is, N is actually... Uh, a list of items, or it's the length of this list of items. So our input to the algorithm is basically an array, right? It's or it's technically two arrays, um, but we're giving it this long list of items, and so the number of bits that it takes to represent n is going to increase linearly with the amount of items. However, w is just an integer, so it works like this thing on the right-hand side. So we can really look at the knapsack problem as being n times 2 to the number of bits that it takes to represent w. And that's why we call it pseudo-polynomial, because it looks like it's polynomial, but it's actually exponential.